my screen. Can everyone see my presentation? Yes. OK, perfect. So good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Krista DeMichaelis, and I am a program coordinator at the Partnership for Public Health, and I help run one of our statewide programs called Wellness Link. So a little bit about Wellness Link. Um, we are a program sponsored by the Partnership for Public Health, and um, that is under the New Hampshire Department of Human and Health Services. And then under that even more is the Bureau of Adult and Aging um, Services. I had to think about that one because they just changed their name. It's not BEAS anymore. But our mission is we truly help um, to reduce social isolation and loneliness for the aging population in our state. And truly how we do that is we wanted to give older adult access to public health. So creating kind of a one hub for older adults to go to to get um, you know, services to live and to age well in their older age. And we really wanted to hone in on that word um, prevent. So we wanted to, you know, prevent a lot of, you know, um, just certain um, health problems that older adults usually kind of deal with, but also kind of preventing that longevity for them as they age. And as you can see on the right hand side of this slide here, you can see a lot of our um, partners and without their help, um, this program wouldn't, wouldn't have um, gone off. So as we go into our first service that we offer is a COVID-19 call center. So um, basically this started during the heart of COVID. So this was kind of the only program that we were offering at the time. And so folks would call us, we would help them answer their questions around COVID. We would help um, set them up with their vaccine appointments. And we would also help them um, find uh, tests like at home tests or tests in the area um, that they could use. And so I don't know if a lot of you have tried to call a pharmacy recently and they always say, oh, you need to go online and um, schedule your vaccine appointment. And a lot of older adults, frankly, just aren't online. They don't have access to a computer. They don't have Wi-Fi at home. So that's where we come into action and we do that on our end and we figure out, okay, what area they live in, where is a close, uh, the closest pharmacy in their area. Um, and then we go through all of the questions that that pharmacy will ask when we're signing them up for a vaccine appointment. And then we will also um, circle back with them after they have their appointment to see you know, how the appointment went, if there's anything that we could have done differently to um, improve. So this is a new um, program that we are offering. It's called VaxTrack. So if you go on our website and um, you will see on the drop-down page um, under our programs is called Vaccination Tracker. And this is a downloadable um, PDF that people can download, print out. And essentially what has on it is kind of the recommended vaccines that older adults um, may want to have um, and kind of the reason why and what they are. And on this next slide that I will show you, this is just a screenshot of what this vaccination tracker looks like and the PDF of it. Um, and essentially, if people um, cannot, you know, get online, obviously, to to receive this, we we are also um, open to sending it to them in the mail um, so they can have a hard copy in in their home. Another one of our programs is um, our new campaign that we have is Are You Alone? Me Too? 
um, campaign that we have. So this is a hotline for older adults to call if they are, you know, experiencing those symptoms of social isolation, loneliness, Truly, we're there to just, you know, chat with them on the phone um, if that's what they would prefer um, or if they are open to, um, you know, getting to know different things that are going on in their community. Um, we would help them connect to either a local library in their area, a senior center, senior center, places that are rich with the amount of events that they have going on in their community. And um, one of the, the facts that we have on our um, Healthy connection, Connections page is um, from the U.S. General Surgeon. So loneliness and isolation increase the risk of premature death by almost 30 percent. And that a lot of us may already know that statistic, um, but it's just a pretty profound statistic that we could easily, you know, mitigate these these um, social isolation um, and loneliness um, statistics by reducing that and getting programming out to to our older adults and providing those resources for them. And I am the person on the other side of that hotline, so they will be talking to me. And so during. Um, 2022 to 2023, the Partnership for Public Health, we aligned with JSI, which is our Community Health Institute, and they helped us gather information and statistics around uh, New Hampshire's rate of social isolation and loneliness. Um, we didn't really have this information before, and so we we're like, we need to run a study and truly figure out um, what is going on. So as we all know, humans are social beings. We need to be with other people to, you know, feel happy, to have a sense of purpose. And a lot of people think, too, that social isolation and loneliness truly rooted from the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, that exacerbated it a lot, but it was still happening before um, COVID came along. So I'm going to share a little bit about our study methods. So first, we wanted to review the literature, review, you know, what is social isolation? What is loneliness? How this impacts our older adult population? We next um, wanted to identify resources in New Hampshire that we had, um, where we were falling short of resources that we needed to add into our communities. Next, we wanted to conduct um, interviews. So going and talking to people that work directly with older adults because they see that firsthand. So um, could be CHWs, for example. Next, we wanted to conduct focus groups. So really honing more into, you know, going into um, nursing homes, going into senior centers, um, going to even like libraries because librarians can also um, see, you know, older adults firsthand and um, their, you know, their feelings around social isolation and loneliness. We then distributed um, surveys throughout the state and we had a lot of respondents to this, which was honestly amazing. We had to cut off people. We had almost 900 respondents, which was truly amazing because, you know, that means we get a lot of good statistics from that. And it truly shows that older adults want, right? They want a solution to this epidemic that's going on. So I kind of took a few um, statistics from our report and I just wanted to share a few of those with you. 18% felt lonely often and 37.4% felt lonely sometimes. Men are more than twice as likely to report feeling lonely often over um, women. And then those who live with others at least part of the year are less lonely. And you can read all these the other ones that I have on the slide here as well. But I just wanted to share a few of those um, with you. Here you can find our full report on our website. Um, I also have the link here on this slide. I'm sure Emily might be able to share my um, slides with, with everyone after this meeting today. 
and um, you can go take a huge deep dive into our report and really read all the nitty gritty um, about it. Next, we have our community calendar. So this is where, where we drive a lot of our folks to um, this, this part of our website to see all the events that are going on throughout the state. Um, we have partners from um, all over the place that add their events to our community calendar. And how our partners are able to do that is essentially all they have to do is create a free partner account with us. And then after that, they're able to add their events to our community calendar. So if you have any events that um, you would like to add to our community calendar, please feel free to create an account with us. And also I can always um, help with adding events and um, if, if you need help with any other things as well. As you can see on this um, picture right here on this slide, there's these um, filters here at the top. So when a person is going on to see what type of event they would like to go to, they can click the region, the, the county that they're in, if they want it in person or um, outside or inside. So that really helps filter out what type of event that they would like to attend. Okay, so there's a question in the chat Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Uh, are these events only for seniors that you're adding or for others could be added? So we really try to focus on the 60 plus uh, population just because of the Older Americans Act. But when it comes to the types of events, they very much vary from any any spectrum. OK, thank you. Thank you. So here's a little um, sneak peek video of our website. So this is our team. So Carissa Elphick is actually the deputy director of the Partnership for Public Health. So she kind of oversees a lot of the um, other programs as well at, at the partnership. Um, and then me, I'm the program coordinator. Um, and then Faith Pakasuk is our program specialist. And she um, also runs our uh, COVID-19 line. So she um, helps folks get them signed up for their vaccine appointments. And then here is just a contact us page. Um, we're on all platforms for social media. Um, we're very active on our Facebook and our Instagrams, our emails there, and also our phone number to contact us. And if anyone has any questions, um, please ask away, but thank you for listening. This is 